install the flexible waveguide before routing the Andrew waveguide to the antenna. In addition to the flexible waveguide and its associated nuts, bolts and shims, you'll also need the support bracket kit. Use the contact kit supplied with the flexible waveguide and an extra shim supplied with the connector kit between the flexible waveguide and the feeder system. Insert the rubber seals in the grooves of the feed and the flexible waveguide connector and make sure they're seated correctly. Insert the bolts from the feed side and slide the metal shim over them. Position the flexible waveguide connector and fasten it in place with the nuts and washers. Tighten everything by hand for now. You'll probably be high above the ground at this point, so be prepared to store nuts, bolts and other small parts in a safe place. Use a hex key and a spanner to tighten the nuts one opposing pair at a time. The flexible waveguide can be destroyed by excessive wind-induced vibration, so it must be firmly fastened in position using the supplied support kit. The worm screw clamp solution shown here is just one way of attaching the support arm to the tower. Attach the support arm bracket to the tower and slide the support arm into it. Position the rubber collar round the flexible waveguide. Adjust the support arm to the correct length and close the clamp round the waveguide. Adjust the position of the waveguide if necessary and tighten all screws and bolts. Make sure the waveguide stays in position while doing this and complies with the manufacturer's bending specifications. Measure the distance from the end of the flexible waveguide to one of the waveguide clamps. You can use a suitable piece of cable for this purpose. Mark the distance on the waveguide before hoisting it. Install all clamps before hoisting the waveguide and make sure there are no obstacles in the way. Follow the manufacturer's recommended distance between the clamps, 
which depends on the weight of the waveguide. After hoisting the waveguide to the antenna, you must route the last few metres by hand, which depending on the circumstances may require the help of a second person. In our case, however, Edgar can handle it by himself. Use the previously made mark to position the waveguide correctly. Remember to straighten the waveguide before clamping it, which makes the last few metres easier to install. Close the clamps over the waveguide. Note that you can remove the hoisting grip from the waveguide only if it is attached with more than 10 clamps. Tighten all clamps with a screwdriver. It's important to support the waveguide along its route to the flexible waveguide as soon as possible. You can't twist this type of waveguide, which means that the end of the U-bend must be close to and in line with the end of the flexible waveguide. Form the U-bend slowly and carefully by making small bends along the length of the waveguide. Too much bending, especially in one spot, can destroy it, so be sure to follow the manufacturer's bending specifications. Make the bend tighter bit by bit. Take your time doing this. If the bend becomes too tight, carefully bend the waveguide back again. Close the upper clamp over the waveguide. The final result to aim for is a waveguide with a round, even bend. Remove the protective plastic bag from the waveguide connector and attach the last clamp. Insert the bolts from the connector kit in the bolt holes of the connector. Position the shim over it and attach the connector to the flexible waveguide. If the connectors are not perfectly in line, twist the flexible waveguide a little. Fasten the connectors with nuts and washers, as before. Tighten the bolts one opposing pair at a time. Once your work is done, you should have a nice even bend over to the antenna, with the flexible waveguide firmly fastened to avoid vibration.